Now we're going to talk about the fantastic relationship between Pi, Phi, and Fibonacci sequence. And it all has to do with dimensionality. Dimensionality. The dimensions. The first dimension, the second dimension, the third dimension, the fourth dimension. So what is the first dimension? In sacred geometry, the first dimension is expressed as the single point. This isn't a point that's in relationship to other points. This is the point beyond everything else. This is the point that's everywhere and nowhere. The center of everything. You and I and the sun and a distant galaxy. Each of those centers is the same center. Here we are. We live in this three-dimensional universe. And yet there's a two-dimensional universe and a one-dimensional universe. This painting here, this is a three-dimensional object, just like we are. And yet, it's illustrating two-dimensional conceptual ideas. Four circles of common radius, the vesica pisces, the petal. These are purely conceptual two-dimensional ideas, and yet they are represented on this three-dimensional surface. But the real abstract thing that we're trying to start from is this idea of single-pointedness, which is beyond three-dimensional reality, beyond two-dimensional reality, underneath, inside of it, one-dimensional reality. So in the language of sacred geometry, the single point precedes creation, and it's the division of the single point which creates vibration. And that's what the universe is, vibration. Everything is vibrating. The root motion of the universe is expressed in the radius and the arc, the two energies that happen between these two fantastic points, these this single-pointedness, this unity, this oneness, which divides and becomes duality, voila, energy, motion. It's like the equivalent of yin-yang, the twin energies at the root of the universe. Now, if you hold the motion between two points to a given distance, and you let this energy happen, this spinning energy happen from the radius and the arc, it creates a circle, and we have pi. If you take this same energy, the same spinning, counter-rotational spinning energy that happens between the two points, and you don't limit the distance between these two points, you have the spiral, phi. So this energy, this root energy of the universe, from one perspective creates a circle, from another perspective creates spiral, phi and pi. Pi and Phi are really brothers of the same energy. Different ways of looking at the same energy. And that brings us to the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence, principally thought of as a growing sequence, was discovered by the brilliant medieval Italian mathematician Leonardo Pisano. Yes, that's the same Leonardo Pisano who discovered the famous 2D graphic known as Metatron's Cube. Leonardo discovered that a type of plant he was observing would first grow one leaf, and then one more leaf, and then two more, and then three, and five, and eight, and on and on. Leonardo went on to discover that this was not an isolated phenomena, but rather was observable in countless cases throughout nature. But for me, the most significant aspect of the Fibonacci sequence is the fact that the proportions of the couplet numbers quickly approaches phi. And the further up you go, the closer the numbers comes to phi, until there is virtually no practical difference. This proves that Mother Nature is following this root principle of sacred geometry in the growth of the universe. So inside this multi-dimensional universe of ours, we have this unity reality, this oneness, this single-pointedness, inside the two-dimensional reality, the conceptual 
reality, which includes pi and phi. And then we have the three-dimensional universe unfolding out of that. This is a dodecahedron, pentagons, which springs out of this two-dimensional conceptual world. And that is the nature of the universe. Everything springs from oneness. And then we have conceptual two-ness, two-dimensional reality. Then we have three-dimensional reality. And that's where the phi ratio interacts between the two-dimensional world and the three-dimensional world. And when it comes into the three-dimensional world, it becomes the Fibonacci sequence. Something tangible, like 8 and 13, a solid, rational number. That is really interesting. Very interesting. So in between these worlds, in between these dimensional worlds, this one-dimensional world, this two-dimensional world, this three-dimensional world, and this fourth-dimensional world, there are slightly different rules for each of those realms. And when the adjustments happen, when the changes happen in between these planes, the rules get slightly shifted in between those planes. For instance, this painting back here, this is a representation of the phi ratio, which is an irrational number and doesn't resolve in a concrete way. And yet, this painting has a concrete dimension. So, here's the thing. It's representing the phi ratio, but it's actually a Fibonacci sequence number here. This number here against this number here would actually come out to be a Fibonacci number. Huh? This is the dodecahedron. It's one of the five platonic solids. It's a three-dimensional representation of perfection, of a perfect principle of the universe. And anywhere in this universe where there is a sentient life, they will come to these ideas of geometry. They will find the dodecahedron. They can't help but find the dodecahedron because it transcends time. It's space which transcends time. And at the center of this dodecahedron, there is single pointedness right in the center of this thing. Just like it's the same center that I have is the same center is this dodecahedron and it's your center too and it's like wavy gravy said no matter where you go there you are we live in this three-dimensional universe we breathe in it we have our life in it we have our being in it we experience time space in these bodies and yet there is a oneness about us it's an illusion on one level it's an illusion that I'm a separate entity from you we are one we are single point we are the same single point and the principles behind this universe are so perfect and so beautiful and so inspiring that it points towards a creative reality behind everything. So this whole Sacred Geometry 101 series started with a single point. And it's evolved and progressed and progressed and it's right back to the same single point. I honor that single point. And all I can say is, namaste. Namaste. The oneness and the single pointedness and the spirit within me recognizes the oneness and the spirit within you. 
Namaste.